Hello and welcome to a video in which we are doing something that I haven't seen anyone else do on YouTube, which is we are going to be installing DWM and ST, both our suckless utilities, on Arch Linux, in which we are going to respect both the philosophy of suckless utilities and Arch Linux best practices. And so this one series you can watch as a part of my uh, series on understanding the Arch Linux installation because we are going to be using the same virtual machine that I was uh, progressively installing during this uh, series or you can just watch it separately for um, learning how to install DWM and ST in uh, following the Arch Linux best practices. And so if you are just watching the understanding the Arch Linux installation, you might uh, want to install some other desktop environment or other, other window manager. So we got to the point in that series when we already created our users, we are able to escalate the privilege of the administrator user so we can use sudo, we don't have to log in as root to do things like that. We already connected to the internet. And so this is the point where it is really up to the user how they configure and what kind of applications they install on their systems. And so, of course, in this series, we like to do a deep dive. So we are going to be doing a deep dive into one of the more complicated uh, window managers that we can find. And so there will be other videos in which we will be taking care of customizing the window manager and things like that. In today's video, I'm just trying to focus on the installation. And so this video's agenda will be to just quickly install the drivers and the XORG related packages. We will also install other tools that we will need to build our own packages. We will discuss and resolve the conflicts or apparent conflict between the Arch best practices and the Suckless philosophy. We will do a quick overview of Git and package build files, which will be necessary to do this installation. And then we will install uh, these two programs, Simple Terminal and the Dynamic Window Manager. So with this out of the way, let's uh, get into our virtual machine. We have to first update our system, of course, and check for our, what is our display driver and find the proper display driver on the Arch Wiki page, and we will install the XORG related packages. So the thing is that if we go on the uh, Arch Wiki and uh, we bring up the XORG page, then um, we will find that it will give us a quite good guidance on installing the drivers. So you could use this command outlined here to figure out what kind of uh, chipset you have if you want to install the driver. So if I show you my uh, console here, you can see I typed in this command in my, this is my real computer. This has an NVIDIA GPU. You can uh, use this lspci-v command and pipe it into grep and search for VGA and uh, 3D uh, words in that. And uh, once you did that, you can find on this XORG page like what packages you might need for what type of uh, brand of uh, the graphical uh, chipset or, or VGA card or graphics card you have and uh, it will have links to each option so you can find more information for your own graphics card. So in my case on the virtual machine we have a virtual graphics card so we will not bother with that step. We will uh, just uh, quickly check if everything is up to date with sudo pacman syu before. Yeah, everything is up to date that we have. There's nothing to do, so we can just go for installing XORG. And uh, so here on the uh, rtricky, you will find some methods and I just summarize it this way on my slideshow that you can either just install the XORG server, which is just the display server for the X11 uh, implementation, on Linux and then you can one by one install the other applications like the XORG Xenit, which uh, you might want to use with XORG or you can just use this XORG apps package, uh, which will install many of these helper packages for configuration or you can just go for the XORG group, which will contain basically everything you might need for uh, set up, setting up a graphical interface. So here we are 
going to be go with the minimalist approach we will install the uh, virtual machine for uh, the video driver for the virtual machine and of course if you are installing on a real computer I just told you how to look for the package you have to install instead of this one as a graphics di driver we are going with the Xorg server, Xorg Xnit and Xorg X set through so only these three packages will we will we will install because here I want to only install exactly the package that I need. I don't want to install everything because that way I will be able to figure out if I there is a command I should use and it's not installed then I will it will force me to learn more. But if you just want a system where you don't have to worry about just uh, go for the Xorg group here instead of these three commands. We will also need git and base develop for installing stuff from the AUR, so let me just uh, jump back to the virtual machine here and uh, sudo pacman dash sxf h6 dash video dash vm -e, and then so this is uh, my graphics driver, then xorg dash server, then xorg dash x in it, then xorg dash x set root and git and base dash devel these will be the packages here it will ask what do we need from base devel we need everything so we just press enter and we confirm the installation pressing letter y here as you can see our virtual machine is installing everything we need so let's uh, talk about in the meantime about suckless and arch so using suckless software on arch linux is actually a good combination because both of uh, the suckless team and both the arch developers try to adhere to this kiss principle keep it simple sweetheart how it's defined in the arch wiki and this means that for arch it uh, it is something that is more in how they package software and what kind of packages they use and how Pac-Man installs things on Arch and in case of Suckless it will mean that they try to uh, keep their software simple and on point it's a kind of the uh, the Unix philosophy that one software should do one thing but it should, it should do it well and they also have this approach that in free software of course the source code is available so anyone can freely modify the software that they want to use and suckless they just push it to its uh, extreme because even if you just want to change some simple configuration like the color of your programs for example you might have to modify the source code for that and they have a rationale for that because they say that well actually reading from configuration files is a very complicated thing and we don't we shouldn't have to have our software to just try to decode configuration files and figure out if something is wrong or not. They use this approach that you have to modify the source code to configure your system and just build again. So compile it and if there is anything that's wrong with your configuration that will just throw an error in the compiler so the program itself doesn't have to worry about how to handle faulty configurations for example. And so for that the Suckless generally recommends downloading their software from directly from the suckless.org git repository and then configure it by changing the uh, source code and then run make clean install as root that will copy the binary files to your file system while on Arch Linux the best practice is to use the package manager to install software and package manager is not make the package manager is pacman pacman does a much better job than you at keeping track of files so if we go briefly to the arch wiki we can see that there is this system maintenance page here and it will have this uh, this part here use package manager for, to install software and it will outline you why should you do that and so just uh, quickly summarizing it first is if everything is available from the official repositories install the binary directly from there if it's not, then check if someone has created a package in the AUR and install that. Or if there is, is not available, then just learn how to create the package yourself. Because uh, as the Archwiki says, the Pac-Man does a much better job than you at keeping track of files. And if you do, if you make the package correctly and install the software with the package, then uh, Pac-Man will take care of a lot of things you won't. 
may be able to make certain types of mistakes. So how can we uh, just combine these two things together? Because most people will just ignore uh, this uh, best practice and just use the make clean install to install DWM and ST and other suckless utilities. And while you know this is these programs are not available from the official repositories, so it, and it wouldn't make any sense to have a binary package for software that you have to recompile to change the configuration. I think only uh, one uh, suckless tool is available in the uh, official Arch repositories, and that's Dmenu. And we will actually be using Dmenu from there because I I don't want to change that at this point, and if I need to change anything, I can just build a package for it later. But anyways, so for combining these two things, combining the uh, Arch Linux way and the suckless way, we have to take a brief look at uh, Git, which is a distributed version control system. And I have a few videos talking in more detail about Git. We're just going to briefly go through the comments that we will have to do here. So git clone is basically downloads a repository. So that rep downloads files and all the history of these files and things like that to your computer. And then you can use git branch and git switch to branch from it. So there, uh, you want to make some additional changes, but you want, don't want the, those changes to be mixed with the official version. Maybe you want to keep the, the official version and, uh, and the changed version that you can do branches in Git, and then using this git add and git commit commands, you can register the changes you made and uh, make a tree. So for example, this is the official version and there is an official update, for example, but you don't want to do the official update. You can uh, make your own changes and uh, kind of branch out. And maybe once you, you realize there is an update, you want to apply these changes on your updates or merge them together. You can do these things like that in Git. We can use git diff to compare files. So for example, I start to change some of my files and I want to see what I have changed. I can use git diff and then git status and git log commands are to confirm what have we have done. So we can check the history. We can check our current status, things like that. So this is a brief overview of git. We also need to briefly do a brief overview of package builds because, uh, as a software that we have to build from source code, we have to build our own packages and we will be using uh, things that we download from the AUR, but we will modify the package build so we should understand at least to some degree what's happening here. So first of all, the package build, and I also made videos on the Arch Linux packaging system, so you can check that out for more details, but basically what we'll uh, do the package build is one text file that contains information about the package to be built and the make package utility will be using like the the different variables like package name and dependencies and things like that that's found in the package build file to create the package and uh, so some of these uh, important things that we will have to uh, modify and worry about when we are working here then one is the source array which will uh, which is, this is an array, so it's a list of uh, the files that are provided to build the package. It can be either provided directly as a file or as a link from the website. And the package, the make, make package utility will download things from the web. And then if there is a, anything that's uh, packaged into like a zip file, like a, a, a or a tar file, so something where more multiple files are packaged together in one file, then those th that will extract from the archive. And then we have to take care of the SHA sums array, which is one of the way that we can uh, verify that our files are the same, that were, they, they are the same as they were when the package build was created. So we will have to create checksums for our files if we modify files there. We will use the prepare function, which uh, we can put a lot of things in prepare function. These are kind of, uh, there can be a script there that is run before uh, creating the package and uh, we will be using that for for a few things there. For example, we could use a patch command there which will take one text file that contains uh, modifications and will apply those modifications to another file. So for example, in Suckless you have the source code 
that is written by the official Suckless developers, and then you want to change uh, or add some new functionality, you can add in a new part of the source code using a patch command and a supplied patch file that will, for example, contain a new function that can be included into the source code by this patch command. And the make package command will be using the S, I, F, and clean switches. So the S switch is uh, basically making care of downloading the dependencies. So if this package has any dependencies that are not installed on your system, it will use pacman to install it. I is the switch to install package. So once the package is built, it will be installed via pacman. And dash F is force. So if the make package utility finds that you already have a package built, it won't rebuild again unless you add this dash F uh, switch there and the dash dash clean you can use if you want to remove all the files that have been created in the meantime. So the downloaded files, the raw files before making the package, things like that. You can use these four switches for that. Okay, so now everything <laughs> that's said and done, for 15 minutes, I gave you a brief, um, brief uh, overview of what we will be using here. So, first of all, we have to install ST because ST is required as a dependency for DWM. So, the package build we are going to be using from the AUR lists ST as a dependency because that's the default terminal that is used in DWM. You can, of course, remove that dependency and use any other terminal uh, and emulator, but I actually want to get ST because the package build in the AUR for ST is is really good and we will be using that as a template to modify the DWM's package build. So for that we will make a custom directory in our home directory. I just like to call it bin in to, to keep in line with how uh, the uh, Unix system named the directory in the root file system which contains binaries and other programs. We will get these package builds from the AUR using the git clone command and we will create new branches. So whenever there is an update in the, uh, in the AUR, we can handle the updates in the AUR separately from our manually made changes. And so, for example, if I go to the DWM page for ArchWiki, it will tell us that there are AUR packages, so you can uh, follow these links. So even though this uh, ArchWiki page will not tell you about uh, how to how to work with properly DWM, it will just uh, say that, well, make install is how the um, official prescribed way by the Suckless developers is. So this is why this video, I found this video to, to make this video very important. So if we go to the package details, so all these uh, information here, like maintainer, licenses, and uh, things like that, a lot of this comes from uh, package build. For example, dependencies come from uh, package build. And this is the git clone URL. So we can use this URL to clone the repository. We can view the package build here. For example, so this will be our package build that we will download and modify. And, but we will modify it based on how the ST is. So let's uh, not waste any more time on this, I guess. And let's just uh, jump back to the virtual machine for um, all this. So I will create the bin directory, cd into the bin directory, and then git clone. HTTP, you have to specify HTTPS colon slash slash and uh, aur.archlinux.org slash st and the same thing for DWM and if we take a look here the two directories have been created and so before we do anything we should Create so not we shouldn't forget creating our own branches. So let's do git branch my config. I will just name it my config, but you can name it anything, and then git switch my dash config. And if we can take a git log, and then the git log will tell you the previous modifications to the original version of these uh, files here. And then you can see in the top that my config and master are at the same state right now. 
So what is in this directory? We have the package build file, src info is also kind of information regarding the package. We have a terminfo.patch and the readme file for terminfo.rst. So those, and there is one more important file, the .gitignore file. The .gitignore is going to be, it, we can just uh, check it by Vim, for example. Gitignore, the gitignore file is a list of directories and uh, file names and uh, what is this regular expressions of things that we will not be tracking by git so it, by not tracking it means that if it will it will not register the file the changes in that file to your uh, git log and things like that so let we will deal with those things later but first, we have to deal with... Uh, let me just hide QMU for a second. So first, now that we branched out, we will be taking a look at the package builds first, and then we will modify the package build of DWM based on the package build of ST. And for that, I don't know how to use any other text editor. If you are using different text editor than Vim, then look up how you can open to uh, files uh, next to each other on on top of each other because this is what we will be doing in Vim and then we will also edit the gitignore file I just showed you. So let's uh, get back to the virtual machine here and so first we'll just take a look at the package build file and I will tell you why I like it. So first of all if you can see here the source array I was just talking about before it has this suckless.org link and it will download this uh, tar.gz compressed file that contains the source code and package name and package version. It's just a very simple way that there is, if there is an update in this uh, package version part and maybe the package name, I don't know, will just, you just change the variables. There is the terminfo.patch and the readme.terminfo.rst. We saw these files, so these files are directly supported here. And these are also listed, and all these three files have a checksum. And then we'll create some other uh, variables here. And it is good practice, best practice to put these uh, underscore signs before the uh, custom variables in the package build scripts. And you can see that this will do a patching. I was also talking about this uh, patch command. So it will change some things in the source code based on this terminfo.patch file. And this is the most, this is such a neat thing here. So there is, uh, in, as I just told you, in the suckless utilities, we have to change parts of the source code to configure, uh, the, the program and config.h is going to be the custom configuration file that we have to support, supply. And uh, config.dev.h will be kind of a template, so it will contain some type of default configuration, and it comes with the program. And uh, so what this script is, does it's explained here quite nicely, but basically the config.dev.h is supported, is supplied by the source code. So if you download this file from here in the source array, there will contain the config.dev.h. But if uh, you don't have it, then uh, what you can do is you don't have it in your directory. So if I just quit uh, Vim here and uh, list, you don't have either the, uh, you don't have that file here. That is, will be downloaded inside that zip file or that uh, tar.gz file, but what this script will do is it will basically after that script, the, that tar file have been extracted and we have the config.dev.h from the source code, the script will copy that basic uh, source code to our directory out there that we just took a look at and uh, we can actually Modi copy that file, so copy config.dev.h and rename it to config.h and apply our own personal modifications to that file. And once that's done, then the file will, then if we have the config.h and then the uh, script will realize that we have the customized uh, setup and we'll use this. So 
if there is no none of these files are there, then it will give us config.dev.h, copy that there, but still build the package. So it will still build the package using the default settings. If we have the, and it will also uh, show a message what about this uh, possibility that we can use the config.h. If there is the config.dev.h, it won't do anything basically because config.dev.h is already inside there, but if we don't have a config.h, it will just use the default config.dev.h to build the package. And if the config.h is present, that means that the user have already have made their own personal changes and this will be copied back to the package and will the program will be built, the binary will be built using our custom made config.h file. And this is just so good that I want to <laughs> use the same thing in DWM. And uh, so the thing is that if we take a look at the uh, git ignore file here, it contains config.dev.h and config.h as non-tracked files because it will be automatically copied by the script there, but, and it wouldn't make sense to track these for the people who make the, uh, the package build for the AUR, but for us in our custom uh, setup, in our custom setup, we want to take care, we want Git to uh, follow these. So we will uh, delete these two lines and in Vim it's just two, pressing the let number two and then letter D twice because I want these to be tracked. And one more thing is that we will change this XZ to, I think it's going to be ZST because uh, this is the new format. So basically all these four files or two files and two directories here, this is star.gz is the file that's downloaded from the web. So you don't want to track that. SRC will be just uh, the source code that's extracted. You don't want to track that package. It's going to be the binary is built by this uh, script. You don't want to track that. And this one is going to be just the package file itself. So it's, it's based on this package directory. But these four things will be created reproducibly by the uh, make package script. So we don't need these four things to track. So now I can save and quit. And uh, I changed the git ignore, but I have not changed the uh, the package build, I guess we don't need to change this because, um, yeah, it's, it's perfect for this purpose. So we can just, uh, check git status here. And you can see that modif git ignore have been modified. So we can save this, uh, into our logbook. These changes should be logged, I think, because this is going to be the baseline from which we are going to build up our system. So I will just type in git add and dot to add all files and then we'll add, do git commit dash m to leave a message and then I will just type in modified git ignore file and uh, now you, you cannot do this because uh, we cannot do this because we did not set up git so git is a distributed um, version control system so Git likes to track who is doing what changes, so you can add your own name, and if you are going to use this on your own system, uh, you should uh, give your real name and real email address. But this is a virtual machine that we are not going to use for anything, so... I will just type in some crap here. Username will be nice micro, because why not? And then now I can do the git commit dash m and modify git ignore files. I'll just modify. Now this have happened. So if I just type in git status again, you can see that all there is no unsaved changes or unregistered changes. And if I go back to git log, now you can see that my name as nice micro and the email address I just wrote there appeared. And we can see that now my config is ahead of the master branch, which was the original thing there. So now we basically we could just uh, build ST right here, right now. But before that, let's uh, just take care of 
some things here. So I will go back to the bin directory and do vim dash capital O and I will take uh, st slash package build first, so it doesn't really matter, and st slash, um, no, dwm, sorry, dwm slash package build. And now vim opened these two files next to each other. And you can see that, um, let's say I will type in colon set no wrap so it doesn't wrap the lines so I can see exactly how many lines are, do we have here. And then in Vim, if you want to switch between the two panels, you press Ctrl W and after releasing both Ctrl and W, you can press L to jump to the right side and I will do the colon set, uh, colon set no wrap here. So if you are not a Vim user and you have another program to do this, then you will just do that. And here we, as we do with the ST, we don't, we won't want to supply the config.h like this. So I will just delete it and delete also the second line from the, um, what is it? The, the checksum files and, uh, my prepare. I will just delete these two lines here from prepare. You can delete one line you delete with pressing the letter D twice and two lines you delete by pressing the number two and then the letter D twice. Number two once and the letter D one twice. So two D D is deleting two, two lines. Okay. Before here below the S H256 sums, I will, let's just go, go back with control W and uh, H to the left side. And I will just press the letter Y twice to copy this line and then go control W L and just here on the last line of the checksums, I will press the letter P and we added the source there thing here. Okay. And there is, we just have to copy everything from that prepare, not everything, but this, this part from prepare will be copying by pressing the letter V. And just going down, down, down as much as we can and select everything until this last closing bracket, curly brace, whatever it's called, press letter Y. So you can see bottom left corner that 31 lines yanked, control W and L back to here. And I will go to this last curly bracket to press P and I'll just delete this curly bracket by the, pressing the letter X. And now that I can go down here and I can see that this, we've copied everything here. So config.h have been removed from the source list and we created the prepare function, which will take care of that config.h. Okay. So let's press control W once more H to go to the left panel and then press the colon W and Q to close our left panel. And now that only the, the, uh, which file is this? The DWM file is open. We can take a cursor look if it looks good. So prepare has a curly braces and the beginning and in the end. And then everything seems okay. So I can also press the colon W Q or W Q. Yeah. Colon W Q to write and quit. And I also want to copy the st slash dot, st slash dot git ignore to dwm slash dot git ignore. Oh, there is no git ignore file there. Anyway. So copy the st dot, uh, the git ignore from st to dwm and then cd dwm. And then we will edit git ignore here. And the only thing we need to change here is that instead of SD, we will change it to DWM and then save and quit. So we made a lot of changes here. So once we type in our git status command, we will see that the package build file is modified, git ignore file is modified, and you can type in git diff and it will list all the changes that have been made. So you can change, you can confirm that, yeah, you deleted the config.h, you deleted the 
the, the checksum for that, we added this new variable for the source there. We deleted the previous prepare function and uh, changed it to this new prepare function and then just press the letter Q to exit. And we did all this, so we will do the git add dot and git commit uh, with git status li. Oh no, I did a mistake, <laughs> because I am still on the master branch, which is I don't want to be on the master branch, so yeah, just check your status with git status. git branch, and I will call this also my-config, and then git switch my-config, git status, and we will now git commit dash m initial setup wait no before i do that there's something i forgot we should remove the config.h so config.h should be removed rm dash oh we don't need anything else rm config.h now git status yeah, okay, now we're ready. Git add again every file. Git commit dash m initial modifications. Git status. Okay, now if I go and git switch back to my main master, switch master. Git status. Yeah, okay, so the modifications, even though I added the modifications here, it have not been committed to this. I think so git log your branch is up to date with origin master so yeah it's the same as the thing we downloaded from the AUR that's what origin slash master means so if I git switch and if I just do ls dash la you can see that here we still have the config.h and we could check package build and you can see that this is still the old package build this is the power of git so git switch my dash config and git log will tell you that we are ahead of the master good and uh, here we have the modified package build all right now everything seems to be ready for me to go to our next step here which is going to be Building and installing st. So we will just use the make package dot dash sif command to build st and then we will be able to copy. We'll get this config.dev.h copied there. We will be able to modify it to config.h and then add this to the repository, for example, or and then change the config if we want to and then build the package again. So I would suggest that usually you only save your modifications or commit your modifications to git once things you checked that things are working because if you don't do that it's hard it's going to be hard to get back to the previous state so let's uh, jump back to the virtual machine and uh, switch to the st directory and we will just run make package dash s i f we don't really need the f here we can also add in clear if we want to clear up the things which we might need to do so let's just do this what oh, it's not clear it's clean sorry And now it will, you can see that now it's in going to install the missing dependencies and for that we need to give the sudo password so pacman can install the missing dependencies which are going to be these two packages and once it's done now it downloads the files from the suckless website and now it's building the package and then it installed the package so we can say yes to this and now if uh, we the package has been installed, so I can type in pacman-qist, and you can see that my system now have st. And if I list the contents of this directory, you can see that 
the package build script created the config.dev.h for us here and it also have, we also have the st-0.8.4.tar.gz that was downloaded from the internet and the .zst file that have been made and which is the official Arch Linux package for Arch Linux and the .zst file that have been made and which is the official Arch Linux package format. So we can check git status here and you can see that both of those st-something files the, those are not listed because git is not tracking those and we can we can copy config.dev.h to config.h and I will change config.h to change the characters here so I want it instead of 12 I want it to be 18 so we have bigger character because I will do these tutorials and I want you to be able to see what I'm typing in even if I'm even if you're watching it on your phone so change the font size save and quit and now we can if I just make package make package we don't need the s switch anymore because every dependency has been already installed we need i and if we just use i then it will tell us that uh, package has already been built and it's not going to be rebuilding it it's just going to reinstall it from the package that's already here but we don't want that we want it to actually rebuild the package so you can either type in so I usually just use make, make package dash sif from you know just a kind of force of habit but if should be sufficient and also clean so all the other files in the meantime have are going to be deleted if you don't add the clean parameter here then you will have a problem uh, if you want to rebuild again and you have patches and uh, source code is already there and yeah, it has to overwrite files and that can get messy so using the clean switch here makes a lot of sense and now it's going to rebuild the package using our configuration file and reinstall it so don't forget to press Y at the end because you need not just to make the new package you need to install it too and now that we've done that let's go back to our uh, slideshow and what's going to be the next thing yeah we are going to just build DWM using the very same method now that we have the very same package build or rather very similar package build so if I go back to my virtual machine and cd into dwm's directory and just make package dash sif I need sif and clean here it will install these dependencies you can see dmenu is available there it downloaded the source code it built the package and now it's installing the package so we have dwm installed and we can confirm it by pack and dash qi dwm and let's uh, just list our directories here we have the config.dev.h also which we can copy to just config.h and you can change things in it if you want this status will tell you that we have two new files you can uh, commit this after I think we should commit this only after we made sure that everything works so let's uh, do the last step we need here and that is we will start X with xorg X in it we installed xorg X in it and so we need to copy this default X in it RC to our home directory and then change it so you can add this is going to be my keyboard setup will be Hungarian but if you use the American you don't need to change you don't need to add this line if you use any other keyboard just figure out what the name of your keyboard layout is and we will add these two lines to the end of this file of the xnetrc file and then we will run the window manager using the start x command so let's uh, just jump back to qmu here to my virtual machine and uh, let's just go back to pwd so I'm at my home directory so I can just uh, copy slash etc slash capital X 11 slash sinit slash 
uh, xenitrus and then just dot slash dot xenitrus x a n a t r c. So I am in my home directory, or if you are not in your home directory, you can use the tilde character here to copy it. Do we have xenitrus here? Yes, we have. So let's edit it. Vim dot x in it rc and uh, just go down down to the bottom delete these file lines here and just set x keyboard set x k b map h u and uh, exec dwm so these are the two lines we add and then save and then Start X. Just type in start X. And you have DWM and we didn't change any configuration so you can press Alt Shift Enter to bring up a ST instance and Alt Shift Enter to bring up more ST instances. And um, we can just use the Alt Shift C to close these and we can pacman QI DWM. And yeah, you can see things are working. And so let's just use ST for the fun of it to cd into bin slash DWM git status. We got the git status here and then git add dot git commit dash m initial config. Because we haven't changed anything in DWM, so I'll just name it initial config. And then, yeah, you can see here that's my config. Yeah, I have a mouse now to show you that this is, you can see it's my config. I'm in the mine config branch. Let's uh, go back to ST. And let's do the same git status. I'm on the mine config branch, that's good. And then git add and then git commit dash m changed font size will be my comment here and we can git log and yeah we are we made two changes after the master so i think if i go back to my slideshow we'll find out that this was the last slide so we did it we installed DWM and ST using the Arch Linux best practices while also adhering to the suckless philosophy of not installing these things from a binary. We actually are, have a method to modify the source code for configuring the programs that we are going to be using. And not just that, we also made the package build files so Arch Linux can create a package of these programs that we have uh, just uh, built from the source code and it will install it properly using Pacman. So file config conflicts and things like when you want to uninstall removing files, all these things will be done without any uh, issue in the future. And I know these programs are generally just one binary, so it wouldn't be very difficult to, to take care of those files, but it is a good idea to follow best practices. And also, using this package build things, you can uh, automate a few things. And we will go come back to this. So this is not my last video on DWM. I already did a lot of research finding out how to customize and change configuration of DWM and how to patch it to add additional functionality to it. And I will make a new tutorial on that sometime in the future. And you will see how good this is that we actually follow these changes using Git. And of course, if there is a new version coming out, we will be able to handle that too using this package build scripts. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, you can just put them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Subscribe to the channel for the next tutorials. We are having tutorials for Arch Linux, Linux in general, and uh, Godot and other free software projects. 
And I also post a lot of my opinions on the internet and follow me on Mastodon where I interact with other Linux people and you can join our conversation there. See you next time. Bye bye.